you are sitting in the heavenly realms with Jesus Christ and everything is under his feet is under your feet. Today I am going to talk to you about great man. I want to talk to you about mighty man, okay? Uh, when I was in Sidras and going for an interview and there was one of my, my great role models, Kevin Zadai, was there. And he said to me, when I entered into the studio, God said to him, there's the spirit of David upon her. This is a warrior spirit, warrior anointing. So, so God is releasing warrior anointing over his children. Today I want to tell you this. When we talk about assignment, we are also talking about anointing. When God assigns you to something, He is also anointing you to something. In the past, I talked to you about assignment and attachment. People who are attached to you, they are not anointed for you. But people who are assigned to you, they are anointed for you. And you need to go after the people around you, and God is sending you who are anointed for the assignment that God has given you. So many of you haven't completed your assignment because you haven't found your tribe yet who is anointed for you. And you have been wandering around like the Israelites have been wandering 40 days, 40 years in the desert instead of 11 days going to the promised land. Why? Because you haven't been finding your anointed tribe. If you don't find the people that who are going to be part of your tribe and anointed for you, you cannot do great things for great God. Every great dream needs great team. Not only one great man, but needs great team. You got to understand that. And we are created to live in flock. I live in a farm and I have, I have animals. You know that. But I want to tell you, if I want to take a chicken as a pet inside my house, that chicken won't live too long according to the statistics. Animals that are built and created to live as, as flock, they don't live alone too long. And according to the recent statistics, that if one of the things, and this is from the secular world doctors and the Christian doctors, proven the number one reason for stigma is isolation. And today I want to bring to your attention, in deliverance of importance is that you are not isolated and you find your tribe and you need to have those mighty men around you instead of the blood suckers that you have been surrounding yourself and they've been taking and taking and taking from you, but they haven't been adding and contributing and giving you anything for your assignment. And you need to question after the teaching why you have been not arriving to the place that you should have arrived 10 years ago. That is big. In Isaiah 60, 22 says, The least of you will become a thousand. The smallest and mighty nation, I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. God is promising us that we must live in multiplication and increase and he's promising us his dynamic power, which is crucial in deliverance and freedom. And because people, are, this is the series that I am starting today for four weeks. But God told me to start with David's mighty man. Because people have been living in the churches without a mighty man around them, without being discipled and without being mentored. And that is why they have been powerless. Because they have been looking at power within themselves, not with Jesus Christ or the Jesus Christ in other people. And he started really pointing out to me, he said, you need to start making your inner circle built from mighty man. And for the people that are not mighty man, you are going to help them become mighty man and woman of God. This is discipleship. So, when I was going through the scriptures and I was asking the Lord, Lord, how one man can kill thousands? You see, all these Hollywood movies, all these action movies are just really rubbing and healing from the Word of God. This is the Word. When you see one man is going 
you know, in front of an army, all these Rambo-style guys, you know, they are coming out with only one scratch, one bandage here, and their face is a little bit, you know, dirty and everything. Actually, this is, this is the Word of God. One is going to slay 1,000. One is going to put a flight to 1,000, and the other one is what? Exactly. Joshua 23, 10 says, One of you robs a thousand, because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he, he promised. So I want to tell you the deliverance part, freedom part of deliverance, with the group of people, with the teamwork, that is very important for you to understand. First Chronicles 11, 10 to 15, these were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land. As the Lord had promised, this is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jashobim. Who named their son ever Jashobim? No, you, you should, somebody needs to name their son. This guy, Hakmonite, was chief of the officers, officers he raised his spear against 300 men who he killed in one encounter. One encounter. He killed 300 men. I, I'm, I'm not going to go to the entire list of everybody, but I'm going to tell you something. David, when he went in front of Saul, he told King Saul, your servant killed a bear and a lion. I, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Why he said that? Because he killed a lion and a bear. He did. It wasn't a lie. Because how you know that it wasn't a lie? The evidence was he was going to kill Goliath pulling an shot. I mean, he, he was just going to kill him with a story. As a teenage boy. Why? Because God gave him supernatural power. Nobody without the supernatural power of God. Samson killed a lion. Nobody without the supernatural power of God can kill a lion and a bear. Nobody without the supernatural power of God can kill 300 men. I mean, somebody is going to be in your back looking for you to hunt you, right? You need to have the supernatural power of God to be able to put a flight to thousands. You need to, this is a season in our life, this is a season in the history of America and in the world that we need to come to a place that we need to be so much walking in our authority and dynamic power that we need to put a thousand to flight. When thousand demons see you, they flee from you. But if you don't submit to God, resist the devil, how the devil can flee from you? Because here, in the Word of God, it also says, day after day, man came to help David until he had a great army like the army of God. First Chronicles 12, 22. Day after day, after day, after day, man is coming, signing up to David's army. Why? Because it was like the army of God. I believe with all my heart, God is preparing, He's equipping, He's establishing His army through on earth right now. And his army is going to excel, increase and multiply and start winning battles that we cannot win in the political realm, in the White House, in the Black House, in this house, in that house, by ourselves. We are so much trying to win everything in the flesh, on social media, putting slogans, putting propagandas, putting stuff out there and trying to win things. But today, God wants to set us free for deliverance ministry, to deliver captives and set all the prisoners free, according to Isaiah 61. If we start building God's army according to God's blueprint, and when we start doing it, who are we going to start with? With ourselves. You need to align, I need to align myself with the Word of God, with the Holy Spirit. If we don't go through, do you think that uh, David was just going in front of Goliath just by his flesh? If he went by his flesh, he was not going to win it. But supernatural power and anointing of God came 
upon him and made him kill the giant. And today, you are facing a lot of giants, and a lot of people are writing right now to us. I cannot find a deliverance minister in town. I cannot find it. This girl was brought to us by her parents from seven hours away because they couldn't find a deliverance minister in their town. And she got set free. Other people came from two hours, three hours driving, and then they said, you cannot find anybody. But I want to tell you something. God is giving that power to you individually to do it yourself. There is nothing more powerful than self-deliverance. Why? Because you are desperate, you are using your self-will, and you are going before God Almighty El Shaddai to be delivered. So, years ago when we were doing our live broadcast to Turkey, I don't know, I, I believe you were uh, p- producing it, Abdallah, and this lady calls the channel and she says, they are telling in my ear, we don't understand anything she's saying, She's speaking Turkish, and, but she, there's a problem here. So they put her on air, and she said to me, um, I, I am demonized. Can, she started saying all kinds of gibberish things to me after she said, I am demonized. And this is all recorded. And then she started telling me, I didn't know what to do with her at that time. I didn't know much about deliverance. And I said to her, oh, please give the studio, uh, your phone number, I will call you. I didn't want to do it during the air, live broadcast. So, she left her number, we called her number, nobody answered, it's the wrong number. She called the following week, on air, she said, you promised me you will call me, you didn't call me. I said, I called you, it was the wrong number, please leave your number again. She gave the wrong number again, and the wrong number. So when I was going to call her, I, after I called her and it was the wrong number, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why? Why she keeps giving the wrong number? She's like, it is not her giving the wrong number. And then the following week she called again. That is desperation. And on air she said, you told me, I said, is there anybody in the house other than me? She said, yes, my husband is in the house. Please put your husband on the phone. She put her husband on the phone, and her husband said, my wife is demon-possessed, we need help. I said, okay, I'm going to call you guys, but you need to give us the correct number. And he gave the correct number. And it was my first time doing deliveries on the, on the telephone. I called her on Skype. And she answered the phone, and when she answered the phone, there were about, it felt like thousands of people screaming in the room. I couldn't even hear her voice. So many people were screaming. And I said, how many people are in the house with you? She said, only me and my husband is in another room. I said, do you hear what I hear? She said, do you hear what I hear? I thought nobody was hearing it, and they told me I am crazy. I said, no, I hear what you are hearing. She said, can you help me? And at that time, I didn't have that kind of faith. I'm, I'm being real with you guys. It was 12, 14 years ago. I, I was like, when she said, can you help me? I asked the Lord. I said, God, can I do it over the phone? He said, remember Matthew chapter 8. The centurion told Jesus, just say the word. Demons know my name. And on the phone, I tested out all the demons from her. That day, it took three hours we ran one. And this woman was throwing up and throwing up and throwing up for hours. She got almost like her husband picked up the phone. And he said, my wife is like right now on the floor. She cannot talk no more. I said, I am going to call tomorrow and I am going to check up on her. And I call next day. I check up on her. She was a completely new person. I didn't hear the thousands of screaming. 
I didn't hear any of her complaints, physical complaints. She said that she looked like nine months pregnant, that much weight was on her. Her stomach completely got flat. And she got completely set free. And she came to three times to our show and gave her testimony. How she got delivered from 5,000 miles away. Just by the word of God and Jesus Christ. But this scripture helped me when I was doing it. Because I had to go before I called her to study David's mighty man. Because God wants to make us. Actually, we are God's mighty man. There's no other mighty man. Look at the mirror. You are that mighty man. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you do what I do. You do even greater things than this. And another woman, she called after her testimony. She called from another sensitive country and she was in... And she was in a mental institution and she, she was locked up all her life because she was seeing snakes. And she, somebody put me on TV in her room. And because right there, I wasn't even doing deliverance, and she started believing. She said, please call that number. And they called me and they put her on the phone. And she got completely set free. On the phone. But the reason I am telling you, oh, how great I do deliverance, the reason I am telling you this, you need to start believing in the power of God that is already in you. And we are going to activate you today as if you are David's mighty man. Because so many men, so many women, they are living their lives, and they are just pressing down that expressing that potential and not living their real life. And that is uncomfortable and that is painful. The pain that you are in, you know why you are in this Christian world? You're going to have pain. Jesus said you're going to have troubles in life. Yes, we're going to all have those things. But they are so lingered and they are so prolonged because you don't know how to fight. And you keep accepting what the devil is throwing at you. You are accepting it. You are settling. You are buying it. And you are not standing on your ground. And you are not fighting back. And once you start fighting back for yourself, you're going to start fighting for other people. But this is the problem. When you don't see a result, you stop. When people don't see a result, that they stop doing it. When you pray over someone or over your prodigal, and God, please save them. Please bring them to their knees. Please bring them to you. Please let them surrender. Send an angel. Send this. Send this. And then next week, the son comes home to visit you. And he's throwing f bombs And he's throwing f words. And he's talking about the, his lifestyle in the world. And you give up praying. Why? Because you pray one week ago, you didn't see a result. If you are not wrestling for that person, how are you going to wrestle with the demons, thousands of demons, or legions of demons in another person? You need to learn to wrestle. You know what happened to Jacob? Jacob uh, was alone with God because you need to prepare yourself. You need to prepare yourself for the, for the wrestling. You need to prepare yourself for the fight in a dark place, in a quiet place, in a secret, secret place. Why Jesus said, this kind only will come out through fasting and praying. I want to tell you, when somebody is manifesting here, praying is not going to deliver them. Jesus didn't pray over the given possessed. He prayed at home. He prayed in a solitary place. He pray, uh, prayed, uh, prayed in a quiet place. Prayer is your preparation. Prayer is your practice. Prayer is... You are activating yourself with the Word of God in His presence. He is your source and he's, you are getting your power in prayer through fasting. Fasting clears your mind. Fasting makes you die to flesh. Uh, you start thinking clearly, hearing clearly. Fasting is a silent prayer. You are becoming a living sacrifice. You are sacrificing your flesh through fasting. 
So Jesus did all of those. Why? Because he was preparing for wrestling. You need to prepare in the secret place. But where you, you have time for the secret place, you have other things to do, ten things to do on your list. Then you cannot show up here and you cannot expect or the marketplace to do the lower. You need to walk prepared. You need to walk armed. When they will seize you, he will look at you, he is armed. Okay? We have security guards here. We have police officers here. Why? Sometimes, you know what they say? A lot of the police cars that you see on the road are empty. They don't have police, but still don't speed. You never know. You don't want to get 120 bucks, you know, in the mail. But some of these cars are empty, but it says police cars on them. Why? Because it is representing authority. The moment you see that car, don't you slow down? But when you are going into, into places, nobody is afraid of you. No demons are manifesting. Nothing is happening. Why? Because you are not armed. We have divine weapons. We are not using them. You see, when we have a police officer here, the guy comes, they are all fully armed. He has this thing, he has pepper spray, all this stuff here, he has taser gun. I love those things, you know. You're going you're gonna to know what kind of weapons you have. You're going to know what to, what to take up. You see, you, you, you really need to know what are you going to fight with. Are you going to fight with knives? Are you going to fight with, you know, pepper spray? Are you going to fight with taser gun? You, you really need to know. Why do these guys have all these different weapons? Because different weapons are for different situations. Mm. You are in a different situation, but you are not using the right weapon for that situation. Okay? You are using a pepper spray when thousands are coming at your way. And you are spraying it like this, and the wind is blowing back at you, and you are on the floor like this. Why? Because you are using the wrong weapons to the wrong enemy. You need to know the weaknesses of the enemy. I want to tell you, the weaknesses of the enemy is you are a child of God. Weaknesses of the enemy that you are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Weaknesses of the enemy, the name of Jesus Christ. Weaknesses of the enemy that you know how to bind and lose. Weaknesses of the enemy that you submit to God. When you obey to God, when you submit to God, when you yield to God, you don't have to fear an enemy. Because what are you doing? You are dwelling in the shelter of the Almighty. And He is putting you under His wings. For you to become the mighty man, mighty woman of God, you need extra measure of discernment. Because in this season, he's going to use word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is so big. You know, I know that there are levels of prophetic. There are levels of uh, word of knowledge. But I want to tell you, if I choose between prophecy and word of knowledge, Pastor Peter, I would, I would choose word of knowledge. I, I love word of knowledge because God gives you a, a classified information that nobody knows. Yes, I know the prophecy reveals the heart of the Father, heart of God. I know I want that too. If I can get all of them, but if I choose between them, I like word of knowledge because word of knowledge gives you direction, instruction, and it leads you and it tells you. And every time I have seen a glorious deliverance. It is right after word of knowledge. Because per the person knows that only you can know that. When God starts giving you word of knowledge, when God starts revealing you things, you have certain responsibility to take care of it. When He is showing you something, you are responsible. You are responsible to expose, maybe. You are responsible to go and confront. You are responsible to pray about it. You are responsible maybe to distance yourself. Not every time you need to expose it unless it was emergency. That day he was planning to do something, right? But sometimes you need to just sit down and pray. What is going to bring that level of deliverance into your life is spiritual maturity. If you don't have spiritual maturity, you don't know when to fight, what to fight, and what to fight with. 
You don't know. But when you have spiritual maturity, you know what you are against. You know what kind of weapon you're going to use. You know when to use. And you know how to use. You need to know all of this. That is spiritual growth. This is spiritual maturity. You don't go to every Jezebel and say you are Jezebel. You don't go to every Leviathan and you say you are Leviathan. There is a reason God is revealing to you, but you need to ask God. You want to hit the rock or speak to the rock? That is spiritual maturity. And with spiritual maturity, it comes humility. When you are humble enough that your knowledge, the God's classified knowledge means you're good, but it is not everything. Also, you need the knowledge of how to handle that knowledge. And it is maturity. Amen? When you are delivered, you start creating, you start prospering, you start excelling, you start being promoted, you start being elevated, you start going to places that you have never been before because you got free. You are out of the cage. And you need to get out of the cage. Because the cage that you are in can be made of gold. And it's never going to be good enough for you. Cage is a cage. Amen? So today, he, this is what he's... Another thing that I want to... Before I close it, I want to tell you this. You need to recognize also the main dominant principalities in the area that you are in. I, I'm going to tell you, every place has its own dominant demonic powers. In the book of Daniel, he was talking about a prince of Persia, Angel Gabriel. Prince of Persia, it was a principality. It wasn't a real prince of Persia at that time. It was a principality. So you need to know the principality. One principality in Virginia Beach area, in the surrounding cities, is very dominant in the marine spirit. Marine, marine spirit, sea, sea spirit, marine spirit. That is very dominant here. You can see it, mermaids, and every, everywhere. You can see all this. But I want to tell you, you can don't take this lightly because you know what it does uh, to, to Christians, is especially if you are not rooted and founded in the Word of God on a daily basis. This is serious because you are leaving your house empty. And it is a mind attack of like an octopus. God told me a spirit of this demonic octopus comes and attacks itself to people's minds. And what you need to do is so you need to take the mind of Christ and declare it and do word declarations in your life. You need to do it daily. God wants to activate the dynamic power in you so you, you take authority. You need to come first and foremost for this. You are sitting in the heavenly realms with Jesus Christ and everything is under His feet is under your feet.